I've got a new toy. This is the Bosch PBD40. If you've watched my videos before, you'll know that I got rid of my old drill press, which broke and I was unable to fix it myself, so I gave it away on FreeCycle. And I promised a video of whatever I would replace it with. My original plan was to get the Shepak DP60, which seems on the face of it to do much of the same as this. But a few reviews said how noisy it was, and I prefer to have something that's not too noisy because I've got neighbours and I'm sure I bother them more than enough as it is. So I decided on spending the extra and getting the Bosch. I've got quite a few Bosch tools. I've been very pleased with them. They seem to be very reliable. So it made sense to go with the Bosch. So let's get this unboxed and set up and see if it was worth spending that extra hundred quid. See you in a sec. Right, I've always fancied the idea of doing an unboxing, so here we go. And this is completely from the beginning. I've not tried opening it before, so if it gets really fiddly, I'll just pause the video and or skip past it. Uh, right, those flaps do that, I expect. Knife. Should have thought of a knife. There we go. Now what? Oh, that as well. Okay. Ooh. Nice. Right. Here we have the base. Over that. And some packing. Some blurb and the instructions. A fence by the looks of it. Allen key, always do with one of those. And oh, that's going to help look. Oh, that's the uh, thing that holds it down. That's good. Holds work down. And we're left to just the main machine. Okay, so not lots of pieces. This should be easy to put together, I hope. It's certainly not very heavy compared to my old one that really was very heavy. I could barely lift the last one. This is much lighter. Okay, so. I'm going to pause now and have a little look at this just to make sure I do everything right and get back to you. Oh, little stickers that say laser radiation, do not stare into beam. Fair enough. Okay, I've had a look at the manual and it is really very simple. It's just slotting in a couple of pieces. I wanted to check because you never know if there's some little screw that you have to remove first and I end up forcing it and breaking it or something like that sort of stupid thing I would do. But no, it seems to me that you just literally just slot two things in. So nice and easy. Let's get that started. So we start off with the clamp and that goes on to here. And then we simply, he says, famous last words, simply put this on into the slot here. There's a little nubbin sticking out on the side that you locate into a slot so that it's facing at 90 degrees. There we go. And we just have to tighten that now with one of these little screws that you use to uh, sort of stop things from rotating. Uh, I think they're called grub screws. Is that right? 
grub screw. Anyway, one of those. We're going to tighten that. I'll complete that in a second because you don't want to watch me doing that. And next we've got this little fence which goes on. And that's going to go... Which way around does it go? That way. No, that way. <laughs> uh, we're going to slot that onto the two slots. And they just tighten up. That's nice. Do it at an angle. You could do it at a slight angle if you need to. There we go. Okay. Well, that's got a bit of movement, but that's because I haven't fully tightened up this screw at the back. I'll do that later. So, as it is fairly light, um, I'm going to bolt it down to my surface uh, over on the other side of the room and then we can plug it in and see what it does and what its features are. Brilliant. Okay, let's check out the basic functions. On our left we've got two red handles. The bottom handle, when you loosen it, allows you to move the main structure up and down. And whilst we're up here, let's measure its height. So from the bottom of the chuck to the base, we've got 28.5 centimeters. And the depth, we've got 12.5 centimeters. So if we then move the main part down to where we want it, when we tighten this bottom handle, it then automatically switches to drilling mode. So this is now on a spring. So as I pull it down, it springs back up for when we want to drill. If you loosen this and you want to set a depth, you put it to the depth you want it to be and then tighten it and it will then stop at that point. Loosen it and this little bar here is what's setting the depth. Of course there's also a digital readout which I'll show you in a minute. So on the right hand side we've got a low ratio and high ratio dial. So the first gear Set to number one is the low ratio, and that spins at 200 to 850 RPM. So that's what you're going to use for your larger drill bits and your Forstner bits. And then when you switch it to two, that's your faster speeds, with that range being 600 to 2500 RPM. To work out what speed we need, on the left of the machine we've got a handy little graph and this shows us what speed we need to set it at if we are drilling into steel or into aluminium. Unfortunately I want to drill into wood and they don't include that. So I'll continue to use Jonathan Katzmoser's guide which I've always used with my previous drill press and you can download this from his website. And I really encourage you to look at his channel, although I'm sure you have already found it, because if you found my little channel, then I'm sure you found his. But it really is very good. Next, let's take a look at what all the buttons do. And after that, we'll actually do some drilling with a piece of wood, and I can show you them again in a bit more detail. But just briefly, we've got our main button here. It's set to zero, so everything's switched off. Switch it to here and the LCD comes on showing the current speed, which of course is zero. And if we turn it again, it'll start to spin. As you can see, it also registered what the speed was. And you can adjust that with this black knob here. Next we've got the four buttons running underneath. We've got speed and depth here, so it's currently set to speed. Change that to millimeters and you can see it changing. Next we've got a zero button for zeroing out. So that is for when we want to position the drill right on the edge of the wood, set it to zero, and then we know how far we're drilling into the wood. And I'll show you that in a minute. 
Thirdly, we've got our laser light, which you can't see at the moment, but you'll see it in a minute. And finally, we've just got a general working light. Now, in addition to switching it off, switching it on and running it, this button is also an emergency stop. As you can see, everything goes out. The power's turned off and the button stays in. To reset it, we just bring it back to zero and it pops out again and we can switch it back on as usual. It's important to note that it also completely resets any of your settings. So if you had a depth set, for example, it will reset that to zero. So let's drill a hole. One of the things I like about this is that we've got a keyless chuck. My previous one had a key and I'm very, very good at losing these things. So I thought this would be a much better bet and hopefully a little bit faster as well. Reading from the manual, the chuck capacity is 1.5 mil to 13 mil. The maximum drilling diameter for steel is 13 mil and for wood is 40 mil. So let's insert a drill bit. First of all, we've got a lock and unlock switch on the red bar. So that's switched to unlock. And then we put it in as usual and twist until it grabs. And then we need two hands to just tighten the top and bottom before switching it to lock. And that should be locked in place. Okay, let's try drilling. First of all, let's set the speed. According to the chart for a 10 mil drill bit, which this is, we should be setting the speed to 800 RPM, which seems quite slow to me, but I did look it up online as well, and that is the speed, so there you go. So we'll set the speed, I'm gonna turn it on. It seems to be difficult to set it to exactly 800, so I've just gone to the nearest one. And it'll keep that speed, of course. Now we've set the speed, let's set the depth. We're going to switch this to depth, we're going to switch on the working light, and we're going to switch on the laser. I've got some wood here, I've marked with a cross, and we're going to line it up. Now at this point, you could simply drop the drill bit down, cut down 15 mil and you'd be done and you could just read off the depth as you did it on the screen but you could easily overshoot that as you're drilling just turn the handle a bit too hard and go too far so we're going to set the stop first so first of all we do need to bring it closer so let's bring the main body down a bit closer and then lock that off Then we're going to bring the drill back down so it's just touching and we're going to zero it. We're going to let go, remove the wood and now what we can do is set it exactly to 15 mil and then lock it off. There we go. All right. So now I can reintroduce my piece of wood. And this time I'm going to clamp it in place with our clamp. That's nice and firm. And off we go. So 
as you can see, that went down to exactly 15 mil. I can lift this off. Ooh, there we go. And we have our lovely hole. Of course, that's now repeatable. So if I decide I want to do another one, I'll bring in my wood again. I've not actually marked anything, but let's just put it here. Bring this on again. Lock it. And this time I'm going to show the emergency stop to show how it resets everything as well. So let's set it off. So if I reset that, turn it on again, everything's back to zero. So we've lost our settings. So there we have it, the Bosch PBD40 pillar drill. I really like it and it's exactly the sort of thing I'm looking for. Obviously I've not really put it through its paces yet, but I'll do so in the coming weeks and maybe do another video to see how I got on. One thing I mentioned at the beginning is its volume level. Now, these sorts of drills are definitely louder than the belt-driven drills, but I thought I'd take a look at what the manual says for its volume level. So, under noise information, it says, typically the A-weighted sound pressure level of the power tool is 73 dB brackets A. Now, I've no idea what that means. I've got no idea. So, I thought I'd do a little test of my own. Now, I know some people have proper meters and they test it, uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to try it against a handheld drill, because we all know what sort of volume level those are, are like. So I've got my little Bosch handheld, handheld drill, and what I thought I would do is very, very unscientifically hold it about arm's length away from my little microphone and see what that's like, and then I'll stand about arm's length from this and run that and we'll get a very 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 vague idea of the volume levels. We'll certainly be able to tell if one is massively louder than the other. So let's give that a go. So I've got this uh, on the faster speed and we'll give it a try. So about arm's length okay now let's try the pillar drill. So, arm's length. There we go. From in the room, that doesn't seem hugely different. Uh, I don't know if the microphone, when I listen to it later, will have picked it up more or less. But uh, to me, there's not a huge difference in the level for that. It's certainly workable and won't disturb the neighbours. So that's it. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it and it might have been of some use to you. And I'll see you on the next one, I hope. Thanks. If you like this video, Oakley here would love it if you hit like and subscribe.